I'm still waiting for the go live option to be available. at heart. I'm so excited to be here with you today to create some fun, patriotic, red, white, and blue artwork. So you can use any supplies. I'm going to show you my favorite supplies that I'm going to be using today. So I am going to use Cali Art acrylic paint. So you guys, acrylic paint is non-toxic, washable, no odor, love it. It's great for all ages, definitely adults. So I do paint parties. I do online classes. And this product is wonderful, again, for all ages. If you're under the age of five, I definitely would recommend supervision. I would use it with students. And again, you can use soap and water to wash it off. Use soap and water to wash it off your paintbrushes. Very easy to use. You only need four colors for this project today. So I'm going to use red, white, blue, and black. All right, I am using a canvas. And again, I want to show you guys how nice and easy this paint is to use. So I always use a styrofoam plate to put my paint on. So I'm just going to, let's go in order. Red. Oh, you know what? I, I'm going to put my apron on in a minute. So there's some red. So I would consider this a medium bodied acrylic paint. The pigment color is very rich. So it's really nice. One coat should be fine. Some of the other acrylic paints are a little bit thinner. And sometimes when the paint is too thin, you have to use several coats. And I don't like to do a lot of coats. So red, white, and I give it a little shake before I squeeze it out. It's got a pop top and a little hole. Squeeze it out. Look at that. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Now, I'm not going to put black on my paint, uh, on my plate yet, because I don't want to bump into it. So I think when you add black to your plate, sometimes it can muddy up your colors. So let's put it back in order. Red, white, and blue. You guys, this kit has 24 colors. I'm just using red, white, and blue, and black today. So the colors are beautiful. Again, they're very rich in pigment, and they come with a set of paint brushes. All right, this comes in the box. These are a variety of sizes. I still have it in the plastic, but I thought I would use those today since they come with the paint. Now, I'm not going to wet my brush. I'm going to use, and look at how thick that is. It doesn't run down your plate. That can tell you it's medium to heavy body because it's so thick. And when a paint like that is that thick, it will cover better. Again, you don't have to add several coats. If your paint is thinner than that and it's dripping, you're probably going to need two or three coats. So when I do this project, I'm going to start at the top with the blue and I'm going to use the biggest brush. So this is called a, a flat brush. And I'm just, I didn't wet it. I'm just going to add the bristle right into the blue paint. And I'm going to use some horizontal brush strokes. I am using 11 by 14 canvas. I'll talk about my canvas in a minute. But right now, I'm just going to use the blue paint. This is called cobalt blue. So I'm using straight cobalt blue. Do you see how beautiful that color is? And I only need one coat. 
and then I'm going to work my way down the canvas. All right. Now, what I forgot to talk about, and I really want you guys to know this because I don't want to get paint on my shirt. So even though this is washable, this is my Amazon shirt, okay? So I'm going to switch gears real quick before I get paint, if I do get paint on myself, because I am a little bit messy. But you guys, I love this shirt. I originally got it at Christmas for the holidays. Look at how cute it is. So it has the, red, the black and white collar. It buttons down. It's cotton. It's breathable. Look at the pretty cuffs, too. That's why I was like, oh, I better not get paint on my pretty cuffs. So <laughs> it's a really, really nice shirt. And I wore it because I got it on Amazon. And it's a great color. And yeah, I can wear it all year round. So um, I'm going to roll up my sleeves. <laughs> I was like, oh, I better not get blue paint on this. Again, it's washable, but I would recommend washing anything within 24 hours because the longer it sits on it, the more it's going to set and stain. So whenever I do a paint party, and I should have started with this as well, okay, even if you're dressed up, a lot of times people are coming from work, so they have nice clothes on, or if I'm doing a house party and they're usually looking pretty nice, graduation, everyone's kind of dressed up. I always bring aprons. So I have my apron here. That's what I forgot to put on today. So you guys, I got the pack. These are great for cooking, for painting, for covering up your pretty shirt. And they're really big. All right. I should have backed up a little bit so you can see it better, but I'll show you in a minute. They're long and um, I get them in a pack of 12. That way, even if they're in the washer, look at that, okay? You can iron a logo on if you want to put a logo on. All right, now I feel better. Now I feel like it's okay if I sprinkle some paint on myself. And you could be the neatest painter, but the person sitting next to you, I always say, could be your best friend, but they might sprinkle paint on you. So now I feel better. And no one gets dirty up here. It's usually in my lap. So anyway, all right, let's go back to reading. <laughs> okay, so here's my blue. And again, I'm using horizontal brush strokes, no water, because I don't want to water this down. If you guys are looking for more um, of a transparent look, you can water down your acrylic paint. But I like the opaque look. Opaque means not see-through. So again, the color is looking more intense. And I'm going to add a little bit more blue to my plate. You guys can always use a palette. I just find it easier to use a styrofoam plate. They're waterproof. All right. So here we go. Now, when I'm doing this painting, I'm going to go down about, three, let's just say, and you don't have to measure. I'm not about measuring. I'm going to go down about, let's say, that far just so you know. Now I could always go to a larger brush. Actually, let's go to a bigger brush. Hold on one second. Only because it'll be quicker if I use a big, a bigger brush. It's still a flat brush, it's just larger. And you guys can go all the way down. Now acrylic paint dries really quick. And you guys, there's, this is plenty of paint for a few projects, depending on what you're doing and how big your canvas is. But it is warm here today with not a lot of humidity. And that definitely affects the dry, you know, how quick your acrylic paint will dry, especially because I'm not adding water to it. Again, water will make it more transparent. So that's about it. It's going to dry really, really quick. And I know there's a, you could see it better like that. All right. So after you get the blue on there, I'm going to give it a minute or two 
to dry a little bit before I add the red and white stripes and some white stars and I save the black for last. So I want to talk to you guys about my easel. Okay, so this is US Supply easel. I have had this for several years. They're really, really durable. These are table easels. Again, I have about 200 of them. So that's about my biggest party that I do is about 200 people. I do a lot of um, paint parties. So again, these have, they're like called little ears, I guess you could say, and they turn like this. So if you have a large canvas and you want to make it vertical, they go up vertical or you can turn them horizontal like this. And if you are outside at a picnic table, those little arms can clip to the back of the canvas. So it's really nice. Maybe I'll just put them down like that. And I do get paint on my easels. I had another one here just so you guys could see up close. Look at that. Okay, that adds character. <laughs> but a lot of people don't like that. Um, you know, I think some of my perfectionist friends, it won't come off on your painting. Look, you guys, all the different colors. And again, I think it looks artsy. What's also really nice about these easels is there's a rubber um, part on the foot of it, so it won't slide. So that's really nice as well. And it goes out and it collapses like this. Look at this. So you just hold it up, close it close the back of it, put those little ears down, and then I put it wherever in the bin. It also comes in a carrying case, but I use it because I have so many of them. I don't put it in the carrying case, but you might want to. So that's my easel. I got to get my painting off the floor. <laughs> All right. So next is um, my canvas. So I would say the most popular size is the 11. I'm going to put my easel up a little bit so you can see it better. The most popular size of canvas is 11 by 14 for me and for my guests and for my friends who I paint with. It's just a really nice size because you can put it on your counter, you can hang it on the wall, you can give it as a gift. It's It transports great. I do a lot of events with people out of town so they can easily travel with, with it. And again, you can use it vertical or horizontal and it's stretch. So if you don't know what that means, it has a wood frame on the back. This canvas is unfinished. You see that? So that's just plain muslin. And what they do is they stretch it across the wood and cover it with gesso. So that's how it's primed. So this is a primed canvas that's stretched and I'm using 11 by 14. The paint adheres great to it. It's durable. It's, again, one of my favorite products, so I definitely recommend the canvas. I really like stretch canvas over panels because sometimes the panels can warp or bend. It's like a heavy-duty cardboard. The canvas is really nice, again, and you don't even need to um, frame it. You can just hang it on a nail because you have the built-in frame to it, right? So you could just hang it on a nail or you can buy a canvas frame if you want to, but I like the way it looks without it. And look, I got a big smudge right there. It doesn't matter. That's the best part about acrylic paint is it covers any of your mistakes. So that's why um, I always tell people, don't worry about it because I make mistakes all the time. So again, I'm just going to paint over it. Watercolor paint is a little more challenging to cover your mistakes, but acrylic is thick. So it's easier to cover your mistakes. All right, so I want to tell you one other thing before we keep going. You're always going to need extra white. So now this kit, again, has 24 colors, which is awesome, and they're gorgeous, thick colors. But I just don't be surprised if you have a lot of black left and minimal white because you go through so much more white when you're making colors lighter and um, adding white to almost every single painting. Maybe you don't use black in a lot of your paintings, but you're always going to probably add white. So don't be surprised by that. All right. So then, now this is also important. What I want you guys to do after you have acrylic paint on your brush and you're not going to use it, you're going to wash it out. You don't want the paint to sit on there too long because it'll get hard. So I'm just going to put my, I have five, my canvas, a cup. Okay. It's got water in it. So I just put my brushes in the cup. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put stars on it, okay? All right, so I have, I'll use these. These are 
I have a ton of these. These are really nice little brushes. Okay. They come in a pack and they have both the square looking ones. Those are called flat and the round tip ones. Okay. I'm going to do the stars. So I'm going to find a little brush and I don't even, people always want to know what number brush I'm using. All I can tell you is, oh, this is a two. Okay. It's big enough. Sometimes I'm like, I can't read it. <laughs> Multifocal contacts. All right. So this is a number two. So, but it doesn't matter. You can use whatever you want. A lot of times I use the handle too. And I'm going to use, I'm going to go back to the white paint. I'm just going to dip the tip in and I'm going to put little dots for the stars. Now, if you want to paint stars, you can paint stars. This is supposed to look like the sky at night. So I'm just going to put these little dots in for stars. And they could be different sizes. I think it looks better. You don't want to make it look like a pattern. You want to make the stars look scattered. And I'm going to try for a small square, a little bit bigger than a square, a little smaller than a rectangle. How's that sound? Now, another way to do stars, I'll show you real quick. Now I'm going to wet my brush. Okay. I'm going to put a little puddle on my plate and I'm going to dip some white in it and I'm going to water it down and you guys can sprinkle. Can you see that? You can sprinkle your stars on. Kids love to sprinkle. Adults are a little bit more precise. They like to put, place their little dots on there. But the kids love to sprinkle. So you could do both. It's always fun to practice different ways. All right. So after you get your stars that are scattered, and we can always add more later. I'm going to go into the stripe. Now, wait, let me show you one more trick. You can use the handle, dip the handle into the acrylic paint and dip and dot, dip and dot, dip and dot, dip and dot. That's just another way to add another size of a dot. All right. I'm going to use a bigger brush. So this one is a round tip brush. I'm going to use a bigger one for my stripes. So I'm going to go to, let's see if it has a number, five eighths. Okay. Again, this is called a flat paint brush. And I'm going to scoop up my white paint. So I am going to do, I'm going to leave a space up here because the first stripe on the flag is red. So I'm going to leave a space for the red and I'm going to do a horizontal stripe for the white. And we're not measuring. No rulers. We're not going for perfection here. We're going for fun art, not fine art. All right. This is for fun. Again, you could put it out for Memorial Day, for 4th of July. It's a great way to decorate. You could put it, you know, in the middle of your table. All right. And again, my blue is still wet. So you can see how the blue is getting in there. Well, I like that look. If you don't like that look and you want it to be pure white, you can wait a little bit longer. I don't want to wait. I'm not that patient. I'm patient, but not that patient. So I am going to just, again, continue my stripes. And I really, I'm letting the bristle dictate the width of my stripe. I'm just letting that bristle do the work. Okay. And let's see. So there's one more. Do you see that? How there's red, it goes red, white, red, white, red, white, red. So I'm going to make this come down a little bit more. Cause the first long horizontal stripe is white. The very first one that's long. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go all the way across. Like that. 
I'm gonna put, let's see how many more I could probably fit. I think that's probably all I'm gonna do for the white. But again, do you see how the blue gets in there? I like that. I like that light blue in there. If I want it to be bluer, I can add more blue paint to it. I'm gonna leave it right now though. I kind of like that. All right, now I'm gonna wash this off. So what happens if I don't wash it off and I mix it the red with it? I'm gonna get pink. I don't want my flag to be pink. So again, I'm just putting it, I have it hidden behind me. I'm just putting my paintbrush in the cup. I'm going down to the bottom, okay? And then I do want you to wipe it off because I don't want it to be watered down. Always have paper, uh, paper towels. A lot of times I use my apron, but you know, I'm trying to look nice and professional. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna do the red. So the first stripe on the flag is red, then the white, then the red. So we're creating a pattern, right? Now, again, my blue is still pretty dark. Look at my nice thick red is all ready for me. And I'm gonna do my horizontal red. And I can even make the red go into the, into there a little bit. There's no rules. The rules are there's no rules. You know what the rules are? You have to have fun and relax. Painting should be relaxing. Creating should be relaxing. Don't stress about it. So you can see this one is more red than my sample. So why do you think that is? Because the paint was still wet. So again, if your paint is still wet, it's gonna to mix together a little bit more. So what could I do if I want it darker? I can always add more blue into it. And again, if I want to bring the red into that part a little bit, I can. Cause I like it to look, you know, not perfect. This is a really pretty red. This red is called Scarlet. It's really beautiful. Like that dark part there, I like that look. All right. And I'm just using these horizontal brush strokes. The plan is there's no plan. I just, again, it looks cool. Maybe I should have put a little bit more blue down here. I can always go back to the blue, right? I can always go back to it. And if you wanna paint the edge of your canvas, you can do that as well. I always think that looks really nice when you paint the edge. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit more blue and remember we're saving the black for the end. And I would say that with most of your paintings and don't even add it to your plate so you don't accidentally bump into it. All right, I'm gonna put a little bit more blue at the bottom. Cause again, we're trying to get it to look like sky. So how about right across here? All right, now, there's different ways that you guys can do the black part, okay? You could do trees. You could do the skyline of the, I live in Cleveland. So I've done this same painting with the skyline of the city, okay? So you could do just buildings, generic buildings. That could be, you know, just various skyline or your city skyline. If you live in Atlanta, it could be the Atlanta skyline. You could do trees. And I even have, let's see, I'll show you one of the samples if I can find it real quick. And someone did this in Guy We Trust and they did a farm. Look at that, how cute that is. So again, there's a variety of ways you can do that. There's no right or wrong. You guys decide what you want to do. So now that I've done the red, white, and blue, I'm going to do the black. All right, 
There's my nice thick black. You don't need that much of it. I would recommend using a smaller brush. Let's see. I'll use one of my little brushes I haven't used yet. No water. All right. So again, you can make a, a bigger brush to get the bottom done. You can make it hilly or you can make it straight. Maybe I'll make it a little bit more hilly. You could do palm trees. Maybe it's Hawaii or Florida. Make it your own, whatever you want. All right, so just for time's sake, I'm going to use my big brush again. Again, I don't even care about the blue paint because I'm using black, but I want to get the water off of it. So I'm going to squeeze some of that water off of it. And again, I'm just going to add a little bit more of my black paint. I'm just going to paint all that in. And when you guys are painting, if you're going to use a paper plate, I recommend I'm using um, Hefty Waterproof, okay? It resists absorbing the moisture of the paint. So if I were going to use a regular paper plate, it would actually absorb the water from it. And you know they're not strong at all. So I could put, usually I have more colors on my palette, aka plate. <laughs> but again, I use the Hefty because, and I just happen to have a stack of them here, but they're strong, waterproof, and they don't absorb the moisture from my paint. And you can make your black go up as high as you want. Now, real quick, I'm gonna use a smaller brush to do my trees. Again, you can do buildings. I'm just gonna show you how easy it is to do the tree. You ready? So I'm gonna overlap it. I'm gonna go up into the flag now, and you can start with a vertical line like that. And then I'm going to do my little You want to see the background. You want to see the flag and your little tree should get a little bit wider as you get go work your way down. Now my trees are going to look lopsided because I'm painting from the side. So I'm going to, sorry, part in the top of my head. I just don't want my trees to look like they're falling down. Does that one look a little better? And you can make your trees overlap. You can do a different tree. Like you can do a burn. You do people. You could do fireworks. Fireworks would be really pretty. Have like fireworks in the sky. I wouldn't use black for fireworks. Black's good for silhouette. All right. How's that? I'm going to do one more at the end. Don't make anything in nature look too perfect, right? Because it's like an organic shape. And like right now, it looks like my trees are landscaped because they're so even. So I'm going to try to uneven them a little bit. Maybe some are taller than others. That looks a little bit better. All right, so there you have my 11 by 14 canvas painting, and I have more to show you guys. So, oh yeah, the wood stars. So you guys, I love to craft as well. And so let's just say you wanna put you, real stars on your painting. You can always embellish it with other things. So I have here, I do again, lots of arts and crafts. So I have a bag 
of little wood stars. They're a variety of sizes. I like the natural wood look. I'm gonna pull them out of my bag, okay? So look at all the different sizes. That would look really cute too on your painting. So you could just add a little bit of glue and you could place it in your, up here and add it to your painting. If you wanna paint these, you can as well. So they're little wood, let's see, um, unfinished. They're just great for arts and crafts or you, you can even put them on the table for dec like decoration, but I say use them for an art or a craft because they're really cute. So again, I use these for a variety of projects and how do I store them? Okay, <laughs> so I got these awesome plastic organizers. So they fit in your drawer and they come in a variety of sizes. I have 25 of them here. Here, I'll use the baby one. So here's my little baby one, okay? And it holds all my supplies. So I'm gonna empty out my little stars that comes in this bag. You could leave it in the bag if you want. But again, I like the organizer. And what's really nice too about these organizers, I better show you one that doesn't have anything in it. <laughs> See here, it has these little circles at the bottom and they come with little grippers. Now I haven't used the little gripper, but you can, this is the little gripper. So these little things come off and you put them in the little bottom, but I didn't do that. So it's up to you if you wanna do it. I don't think they need it, but if you wanna do it, can't, you can. So they come in different sizes. So I have this one that's like a little square. I have a long one for my pencils. I've Again, there's 25 of them, so there's a bunch of them. And then you can put them in your, you know, that junk drawer? Okay, so I decided to organize my junk drawer. So these are awesome to keep pencils, pens, markers, whatever you want. Then I have my Sharpies. I always have Sharpies. Sharpies and another one. And I use Sharpies for almost every project. If you guys wanted to use a Sharpie for this project, you could, if you wanted to, you got to wait till it's dry. If you wanted to put um, in God we trust in the sky, you could do that. I would wait for it to dry and use a Sharpie. Sometimes you can even sign your artwork with a Sharpie. So I always have Sharpies around. And let me just finish talking about one more thing about my containers. Okay. Again, they come in one, two, three, four, five sizes. I have a huge one too. Here's the big one. So there's the big tray too. This would be good for notepads. I got my Sharpie in there. Let's put the Sharpie in the other one. I'm trying to get organized, you guys. Again, it's a little, and they have a little circle on the bottom. Very, very nice. Great fits in your drawer. You can put your makeup in there too. I have mine full of art supplies. So I'm gonna show you one of my favorite art supplies while we're talking about art supplies. Okay. Let me get it out of here. So this is a white eraser. So you know, sometimes when you're erasing, if you're drawing, whether you're writing or journaling or drawing, and you use that pink eraser and it leaves scuff marks or it's just not pretty. So these are so nice. They're um, polymer erasers. They're really soft and they don't leave a mark on your paper. So anyways, that's what I have in here. So these, I don't have my pencil or paper out, but I'll show you guys another time. Erases beautifully and it doesn't leave a mark on your paper. So these are awesome if you like to draw or write. Great. And then you store them in your little container to keep yourself organized. All right. What am I going to show you next? Oh, yeah. What summer, you guys, without sidewalk chalk? Sidewalk chalk here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there. Wait, it's down there. Hold on. So if you don't want to paint, what if you're having company over and you have, you know, they have kids, get some sidewalk chalk. Okay. There's nothing better than letting a kid go do sidewalk chalk outside. Okay. Beautiful colors. You guys know this is washable, right? Whether they get it on their clothes or not, this comes right out. So this is just a fun thing to have. Let them, you know, color and do whatever they want outside, keep them busy. Great for picnics, great for cookouts, keep the kids busy, right? All right. Now, if you guys want to bling up your painting, if you want to add a little bit of sparkle to your painting, one of my other favorite art products that I bring to every paint party with me is Maj Podge, okay? 
Now, you can tell my Mod Podge has been used. <laughs> always have this with me. Always use it in the art room. Again, non-toxic. And it looks like glue. It comes out white, but it dries shiny and sparkly. So beautiful. So I'm going to show you. I did half of my painting with the Mod Podge so you can see how it looks. Because it does take a few minutes to dry. So let me show you on this one that's dry okay and you you don't want to use Mod Podge on a wet painting okay it will take away the sparkle it'll smear up your paint so you want to let your acrylic paint dry before you use this so that's why i started it on this one so you can see it so if you guys are going to come close let's see if i can get it to sparkle can you see the sparkle there okay that's only where i did it so it's spark and it looks better in person it doesn't look so sparkly on you know, camera, everything looks different. But I only did this one little section so you could see it. But oh, it's so beautiful. And again, it's non-toxic and it seals your painting. So if you want a little bit of a sheen, water-based, it does um, have a smell to it. A lot of the stuff, including my acrylic paint, does not have a smell. It's odorless. So Mod Podge does have a smell, even though it's non-toxic. So I just don't want you to be surprised. It kind of smells like glue. So this is a um, non-toxic glue sealer, all right? But it's got sparkle. So this one's called Sparkle Maj Baj. All right, again, you just use a paintbrush. I'm gonna take a dry paintbrush and I wanna show you what it looks like. Cause again, it's gonna look like glue and you have to make sure your painting's dry. So let's just do it over here just so you can see it. See that? It's white. Now, if you add more, it's not going to be more sparkly if you put more on. So just add a thin coat to it. That's all you need. If you make it too thick, it will dry white. So you just want to put a light coat on it, spread it out, and leave it alone for a few minutes. It dries pretty quick. You can use Mod Podge on paper, on wood on glass, on metal, on canvas. So you can use it on any product you want to, but that's what it's gonna look like going on. Again, you don't wanna just pour it on and leave it cause it'll dry white. You wanna brush it on. And I'm going to leave it alone for a few minutes just so you guys can see how it dries pretty quick. I'll swap this one out with this one. So I mean, you can probably watch it dry pretty quick. And we can do that one once it's dry. But I love glitter, but I don't like loose glitter. Okay. I stopped using loose glitter a, glitter a long time ago because it would get in my eyes. It bothered the kids. It was all over the house. Parents hate glitter too because it falls off the artwork and ends up everywhere. So this is an alternative. It's in a liquid base. So you get the sparkle and shine without the loose glitter. It never flakes off. It stays adhered. It's beautiful. So that's why I always have this stuff. Love it. Love it. Love it. If I had to pick 10 top products that I couldn't live without that are art related. This would be one of them. Okay. Okay. Let's see what else I have to show you guys today. Oh yeah. All right. So another one of my favorite products. And you know what? I found out about this product from my students. So let's put our acrylic paint back up here. So if you don't know what multimedia is, it means you can use a variety of different types of supplies, watercolor paint, crayons, markers, color pencils. So that's what multimedia, media meaning a variety of supplies. So I have a drawing book. It's called Mixed Media. Let me take this down here. Let's see if I have all this placed. Okay, I don't want an avalanche. I'm so careful when I'm setting up and then I move one piece and then I end up with an avalanche. <laughs> so this is my mixed media pad. So this is where I do a lot of my art projects. It's again, it's a little messy, you guys, but I'm going to show you the cover. 
Okay. So it looks like this, right? And this is an app art flag. So this is done in colored pencil. I'll look, let you look at it up close. Okay. Color pencil. And it has, so it's got this that never snags on your clothes. Thank goodness. I hate that. So I've never been hurt by that. You know, those wire things that hurt you sometimes, but that doesn't happen. And then there's a perforated line here. So if you want to take it out, it comes right out. I'm going to not take it out all the way, but if you want, you can get a nice clean line to get it pulled out of your pad. Again, you can use it. Let's see what else I have in here. I really want to stick with the patriotic, but you guys can use the pad horizontal or vertical. Let's see if I have a vertical one in here. Here's a vertical. Okay. And again, this is markers. So you guys can do your artwork vertical. You can do it horizontal. You can use markers. You can use acrylic paint in here. It won't go through. So you can do it. Let's see if I have an acrylic painting in here. Oh, there's one. This. this is an acrylic painting, okay? So the acrylic painting doesn't even go through. Look at the back of it. See, all right, look, I'm practicing. <laughs> but that's an acrylic painting. So if you're wanting to paint and draw and color in a variety of art supplies and you don't want to do canvas every single time, this is awesome. So again, it's mixed media. That means you can use any supplies that you want. It's heavy duty and it doesn't bleed through. And if you want to rip it out and hang it up, you can, or you can leave it in your drawing pad. So I have these all over. I have a variety of sizes and um, just love them. So again, I learned about this from one of my students because I was going through so many canvases when I was teaching. Here's watercolor. There's a watercolor one. There's my a marker. There's a gopher. I think that's a gopher. Oh, this is a back to school. This is another acrylic painting too. So anyways, you guys get the idea. This is great, especially if you're going to create all the time. Pencils, color pencils, magic markers, oil pastels, whatever it is. That's what mixed media is. It means that you can use any supplies that you want to. And... I'm trying to think of what else. So real quick, I want to tell you guys one way I decorate. Not only do I decorate with artwork in a variety of places, I like to put pillows out that are really fun, but not just pillows. I change the tablecloth because it changes the whole feeling, right? So whether it's outside at a picnic table or inside at my dining room table, I put out a festive tablecloth. So I happen to be, I, I wanted to show you guys, but one of my favorite ones I got is this red one. That I'm sitting on, <laughs> but I didn't want to get paint on it. So I use this for 4th of July, for Memorial Day. I use it for Christmas. So it's a fabric, it's washable, it washes super easy, and it's great. Um, it's a beautiful red color, and it comes in a variety of sizes. So I can use it whether I have a leaf in my table and it's big, but it changes the whole decor of my house. So I have a variety of colors. And again, I change it according to the holiday or the season. And then maybe you put your painting in the middle of it. Maybe you throw some stars on top of the tablecloth. Mm, don't use loose glitter though. Don't use Maj Podge on your, on your thing either. Like just, I'm thinking like you take those little wooden stars and throw them on your tablecloth. Um, again, just think outside the box. That's what we're all about. And I don't, I think I forgot to talk about my, um, so this is my little magnetic. This is probably one of the last things I'm going to talk to you guys about today. As I was waiting for that to dry, but I told you guys that takes a few minutes to dry. That, But you can start to see it's drying. So as it dries, the white's going to disappear and you'll see the glitter more. Okay. And you can put it all over. Just make sure the paint underneath is dry. You can put it on top of crayon. You can put it on top of marker. Okay. So. I got some Expo markers. I'm a teacher, you guys. Expo markers. Every teacher has Expo markers for their dry erase board. Beautiful colors. Not They don't smell, okay? Back in the day, they had an odor, but they're, they come odorless now, which is amazing. I think I'm going to have to turn this a little bit this way so when I go over there, you guys can see me. Okay. And you still can't see me. <laughs> Hold on. 
All right, let's see if you can see me now. Can you see me now? Yeah, look, now I look like a teacher for sure, don't I? Okay, so now I'm in front of my dry erase mark board. But let's say, here, I'll just do a flag real quick. Here, I'll do some stripes. So here's my, that's, you guys can't even see that. Okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the point is I wanted to show you guys this thing. So I have all my dry erase markers in here. See that? Beautiful colors. It doesn't smell. And I have this container that holds it to keep, again, I'm going, I'm really, really, really trying to get organized. Every day I, I, I try a little bit harder. <laughs> It's not always great, but I'm getting a little bit better. So this helps me. So this is has magnets on the back of it, right? Now, I will tell you, if you put too much stuff in it, which I have been known to do, it will slide down. So this is a whole pack of Expo markers that I have in there, okay? See that? It sticks to it, okay? Now, if I added more to it, it probably would slide down. So that's about mm, all that I'm going to put in there. If I want, I could take some stuff out and put scissors and pencils in there. But really, the most important thing is that it's for my dry erase markers. All right, let's see. Let's draw something you guys can actually see. Can you see that? Yeah. See, people think because I'm an artist, I have good handwriting. Not the case. I do not have good handwriting. But I have fun. Sometimes when I have fun, I make a mess. So anyway, okay, the Expo markers. I think I covered it all. So I... Love doing patriotic artwork. I kind of make a mess when I do it. <laughs> and again, this is super easy. I And it comes off your nails, ladies. I know that that's really important. When I do a paint party, people always ask me what kind of paint I'm using and what it's going to take to get it off their fingernails. So it comes right off, you guys. Look at this. I just so This is dry right now. And again, it just takes soap and water. But sometimes it peels off just like glue. You know how when you were a kid, glue used to peel off of you? It's the same thing with acrylic paint. If you get it on your wood floor, your ceramic tile, literally it comes right off. And if it's dry, you use your fingernail, it peels right off. So it's amazing. I'm in people's homes all the time with acrylic paint. I go to uh, office buildings. So if you get it on carpet, just use some soap and water right away and it'll come right out. Oh, I know what I forgot too. This is another one of my last pro I keep saying that because I keep... <laughs> I keep looking around. Okay, maybe two more things. Two more things I'm going to talk about, and then we're going to wrap it up. Um, okay, so I have been using this mouse pad. Okay, now mind you, I got a little paint on it. Okay, yours won't have paint on it probably, but it is so comfortable, and it's got a sticky pad on the back of it, so it doesn't move around. And it's got this cushion here to help my wrist, because my wrist was getting sore from using the mouse. Okay. And here's, you guys don't make fun of me. Here's my mouse. Okay. My mouse has a little bit of paint on it too. Can you believe it? Okay. I'm an artist. So look, my mouse pad, my mouse, easy, easy breezy. Okay. Of course you put it down. It's been on here this whole time. I've been using it. And again, the sticky part, can you guys see that? I'm going to turn this down a little bit. So the sticky pad now you can see that my dirty tablecloth, but it glides around easily. And then the sticky pad keeps it in place. So I have also a glass table that I work on and I put it on there and it's really, really comfortable. So I'm really happy with this product for sure. And my other product, and it also has paint on it. So this is top 10 products I can't live without my OtterBox. So no matter what phone I have, I always have an OtterBox. I have an OtterBox on my iPad too. So, all right, you guys, it's got paint on it. So don't judge me, but I take a ton of pictures. When I'm at a paint party, I do videos, I do photographs to share with all my guests. So I'm, but I'm always dirty, right? I'm always covered in paint. Um, but this protects my phone. Okay. And I also have 
I don't know if I have my box here, but my screen cover's on it too. Oh, here it is. Hold on. So I have my OtterBox Flex screen cover. All right. So I have that because the OtterBox does not have a screen cover. And I just like to protect my phone. But it, everything works easy. I have no problem with opening up, opening up any of my apps, even though I have a screen protector on there. I have... I don't want to tell you guys how many times I've dropped my phone, but I have dropped my phone many times, gotten it wet, dropped it. I was kayaking and flipped and it was in my pocket. So I'm just saying my phone, I'm not guaranteeing anything. I'm just telling you my phone for years, I swear by it. This product is heavier than a lot of other um, covers for cell phones. So I will tell you that it is heavier, but it has this rubber um, now I'm going to have to take this off to show you guys, but so here's where you charge it. Unless you have one of those stands, you, this is where I just usually plug in the cord, but this rubber, let me see, I haven't taken it off in a while. I'm going to show you that this is what really protects it. Okay. It's this rubber exterior. Okay. Comes off. That's, I'm telling you, this is part of the reason why it's so durable is the rubber protector. And then the inside case is plastic. Okay. I still have my pictures on. You guys don't want to see my pictures. <laughs> They're good pictures. They're paint party pictures. All right. So again, then you just open it up. I got, I haven't done this in a while, so I don't take my case off too often. There's no need. So let's see. Okay, so there's these little plastic clips along the edge, and it just unclips like that. See that? It's really, really easy to put on, too, and I am not advanced. But So this is how you get it. You just take your phone, stick it in there in the case, and look, this has got a cushion, too. So I don't want to jinx myself, but I have never broke a phone. Never, never, never. I've just upgraded them. But, okay, so you slide it in there. You put the clip on top of it like that. Make sure it's not upside down. I got to pay attention, right? So you can have the hole to charge it. You hear it snapping? Purple's my favorite color, so I got it in purple. And then you just put back on so it's all snapped around, and then you put back on the rubber part. And I'm good to go. And I put the, um, the, this goes on before you do that part. And again, it was easy. If I could do it, anybody could do it. You know, today kids are so good at everything, but I was determined to do this one on my own. So <laughs> I could do it and it's protecting my phone and I love it. So I have a 13 Pro Max. That's what I have now. This is my 13 Pro Max. And again, I love it. I don't think anyone really could be harder on a phone than I am. And it does come with the clip, although I don't use the clip. I just stick it in my pocket or in my purse. But again, I'm taking pictures all the time. So um, this is a must have for me. Yours won't come with paint on it. <laughs> but I can probably fix that for you if you'd like. I can customize it. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So that is it. Those are my favorite products. I hope you guys had fun and enjoyed and learned a little bit. And if you have any questions, you can always chat with me. Let me know. And um, I'd love sharing art supplies and fun stories with you guys. So you guys have a great holiday weekend, week, summer. Yeehaw! I'm so excited. I'm going to do another summer project soon. So tune in and um, I'll share more fun finds with you guys. I'm Denise. Thanks, you guys, for watching.